everyone and welcome to the When Harry Met Ani podcast. My name is Emily. I live in Hershey, Pennsylvania and you have stumbled across my little corner of the internet where I talk about mostly knitting and crocheting. You can find me on Instagram as at When Harry Met Ani and on Ravelry as Emmeister. Uh, for those of you who are new to the podcast, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I, I hope you like the show. I hope you like uh, watching previous episodes if you've gone back and started from the beginning. Um, and for those who have been with me for a little bit longer, thanks for returning. Um, if you like this video, please like the video and also subscribe to my YouTube channel and you will know when I post a new video. Um, I, for 2019, am planning to do every other week. Um, I podcast, I last podcasted on January 4th. 6th maybe January 6th um, so it's January 20th it's Sunday and so I'm here every other week I hope to put a podcast out last week um, but that just didn't happen because of work um, so today's episode I have a project from the vault I have a finished object it is actually not my finished object though I have two works in progress I have a couple things to share for my prime time segment and then I have a really special collaboration um, segment with a podcaster named Louise from Adventures with Yarn. Louise and I um, met through podcasting and on Instagram and we um, decided to exchange some questions for each other that we had and that each of us would answer on our respective podcasts. So I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, so I have 10 questions from Louise. And before I get into the knitting, um, and crocheting, actually my, my From the Vault this week is a crochet project, um, I have just one announcement. So I am hosting the RBG Cow, which is a knit along dedicated to Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And if you choose to participate, you can pick from one of two patterns to knit. Um, the first is the I Descent Cardigan by Andrea Wrangle, and the second is the Notorious RBG by Park Williams. So I have chosen to knit the Notorious RBG by Park Williams. Here's just a cover, uh, the cover of the pattern. And how it's going to work is that the knit along started on January 15th, and it runs until March 15th. Um, I hope this would give people enough time to buy yarn and swatch and, and have a sweater done. It's a month and a half. And March 15th, the end of the knit along, is Ruth Bader Ginsburg's 85th birthday. Um, I'm still deciding what prizes I would like to give. I was thinking either the book um, Notorious RBG, The Life and Times of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I was thinking maybe of giving a Knit Picks gift card, um, or actually my dad, thanks dad, hi dad, uh, he suggested, um, giving one, a mug that I have, um, which is this Ruth Bader Ginsburg inspired tarot themed mug. Um, so it's like, it's her on the justice card, um, for tarot lovers and, um, tarot aficionados out there, but it's a really nice big mug. Um, and please reach out to me with any questions. I personally have not started this sweater yet as I am knitting furiously on my Umqua by Caitlin Hunter um, as part of the Grocery Girls Speedy Sweater Cow. I'll show you my progress on that a little later. So I have yet to start the RBG Cow, but um, I think I'll be able to start that um, February 1st, which will give me about a month and a half to do it. So I'm look I'm, I'm really enjoying seeing a few of the, uh, works in progress that have popped up on Instagram. Um, so keep the pictures coming. All right, well, that's it for all my announcements. So I'm just going to get into my first official segment, which is From the Vault, where I share an older knit or crochet project that, um, you know, I still want to give some attention, even though it's not a current work in progress or a finished object. From the Vault is the Sweet Pea Afghan by Lion Brand Yarn. I picked up this pattern at Michael's and um, it is just a granny square blanket that you make 56 squares and then stitch them together. 
Um, so I picked up one of these, I think back in 2007. Um, I am using the colors Sweet Pea, which is this green that is actually featured on the front of the pattern. Um, Angel White, which is also the white in the pattern. And then I'm using Baby Aqua. Um, it is still, it is, I would call it an unfinished object, a UFO, um, because you're supposed to make 28 of this square and then 28 of this square before stitching them together and you alternate so they'll be next to each other like this. And I only have 11 of this one and 12 of this one. So 23 total squares, so I am 25 short. The reason I started making this project was, I believe, it, I started making this project after I learned how to crochet. I'll get into that a little bit later, actually, in um, Louise's Q&A segment for me. But um, I really wanted to crochet a baby gift for um, the woman I was babysitting who was pregnant. So she already had two children and she told me she was expecting a third. So I wanted to make her something and I came across this project uh, when I was in Michael's and bought the yarn. Unfortunately, I didn't buy enough yarn. Um, yeah, this is living in my fancy schmancy hefty bag, project bag. So you can see the yarn that I have left. Um, all the squares are still in there. I was kind to future Emily and was weaving in my ends as I went along. So um, I have finished squares for the majority of them. I think there's two or three that don't have their ends woven in. But um, the idea is to just make uh, strips that you, you connect um, squares alternating for, you put seven of them together and stitch them together and then you make eight of those and then you you put the whole thing together, I guess you stitch it all together, which seems like a huge pain. Um, so I was thinking about repurpose, repurposing this project and perhaps making like little mats for my cats. Um, they really love sitting on all the things that I knit and crochet, including afghans, like the one, like the ones behind me. Um, they love those things. And Logan and I were talking for a while about maybe making them like little, like, chair coverings or um, little mats that we could put on the sofa so that they know that they're, those are theirs, um, free for them to use. But of course I'd want to use yarn that wasn't like um, $30 a skein. Uh, so this is um, Vanna's Choice Baby. And I'm actually not even sure I can find these colors anymore, so I kind of have to use what I have left and then call it. Um, so that, that is it. That's my um, Sweet Pea Afghan by Lion Brand Yarn. Next up is finished objects. I myself do not have a finished object, but since I last recorded, my mom finished her first project that she completed on circular needles and also her first project where she learned how to use double pointed needles. So I'm very proud of her. I gave her a little hand in getting started on the circular needles. Um, she did most, if not all of the work with the double points, which was really cool. Um, so this is her hat. It is called the Classic Knit Hat. Um, it's a free pattern on Ravelry by Haley Scarpino. Um, I gave her some worsted weight yarn that I had received in the Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted giveaway. Um, it is Knit Picks Brava Worsted and Peacock. Um, she used size 8 needles and it is a 2x2 two two rib and then just stockinette for the hat. And um, she was able to work this decrease section until like about three rows, three or four rows before the end, before she had to switch to double points. I thought it would have been earlier, but I kind of told her like, you want to, you want to not have to use double points for as long as you can avoid having to use them. Um, so she came over last weekend and, um, the whole idea was that I was going to show her how to use the double points, but then I, I, 
figured, okay, you might as well just keep going um, until we actually need to put them on um, double-pointed needles as opposed to starting them during the decrease section. So she came over and knitted prob like this much in one sitting with me, which was really cool. So I'll just put it on and show you. Um, I told her that I would weave in the ends and block it, which I have yet to do. Sorry, Mom. Um, but it's just a nice beanie. So I'm really proud of her. Um, she hadn't worked with circular needles before. Um, and I don't know if like a rolled brim maybe. That's nice. So yeah, I think you could get away with either a rolled brim for this or um, like have it be a little bit more slouchy in the back. Um, and the pattern is really easy to follow. So again, it's the classic knit hat by Haley Scarpino. I was looking some I was looking for something with like eight size eight needles because I had those. I put together like a little kit for her. Um, and after she finished this one, we cast on another one for her to do. Um, she has since texted me and told me that she is bored now with uh, this project um, and would like to learn how to do cables. So um, I have to pick a project that we'll do um, that will be like a, a nice introduction to cables um, because cables are a lot easier than um, they look. They, they're they just a really nice embellishment that are, that is, um, that looks world more advanced than what it actually is. So I'm still looking for a project for that and hopefully within the next few weeks um, she'll have a work in progress that involves cables. So congrats mom on your finished object which I am modeling and um, yeah I'm really proud of you. Next up are whips. I have two whips to share with you. Uh, if you've seen my past few episodes these will be very familiar to you but I've made progress on both of them so I thought I would share. The first one is the Annalise Wrap Shawl by Loop Yarn, um, and I it's a multicolored um, asymmetrical shawl. It is fingering weight. The yarn is Knitted Wit Victory Fingering in the Rock Candy set, um, and it's a rainbow shawl. So here's from the very beginning, and um, there's the green, and I finished this turquoise color. And now I am fading in the blue. This is a really nice fade, um, a faded section. Actually, all of the, the colors have really faded well into each other. Here's the blue. And I'm done with the turquoise. Makes nice, nice amount of, oh no, I'm not done with the turquoise. I'm still working with the turquoise in the fade, um, but I'll have a little less than this left. Makes great minis. Um, I'm thinking of making like shorty socks or keeping them around for heels and toes of um, other socks that I make with fingering weight. Uh, this project is living in my um, NSP Designs uh, medium sized cat project bag. I've talked about this bag a lot. Uh, but yeah, I have. I, I've been taking this um, project with me to work on during breaks at, at work, like my lunch break, and I find that much more relaxing than trying to work on my uh, sweater that I'm currently working on because it's my first sweater and um, I'm learning a lot of new things and I don't want to be frustrated at work when I am supposed to be taking a break and relaxing and then I don't know how to do two at a time sleeves and I try that and then my hour's up and I get frustrated and I have nothing to, th nothing to show for it. Yeah, that didn't happen. Yeah, it really did. <laughs> but anyway, I've been kind of switching between this project and my Umqua by Caitlin Hunter, which is the next work in progress I have to share with you. Living in my shuttle spindles and skeins tote bag um, from Boulder, Colorado is my Umqua sweater. I am proud to report that I have finished the body. So I put a little progress keeper. Here's where I was the last time I podcasted. 
and I now have a complete body and I even did short row shaping on the back I'm very proud of myself you can't really see it which I guess is the point um, but I added in when I was working on this it's now removed but I added in a lifeline um, and I highly recommend that if you're trying a new technique um, just like threading through a piece of different colored yarn to kind of mark the row that you ended on and would feel confident if you ripped back you could start over from. So I did that and I'm really glad I did that because I messed up the short rows um, so I, I did have to rip back at one point. Um, I divided, I like I divided this off, this section off. These are where my sleeves will go. And here's another section for that. And yeah, that's my body. I've also made a lot of progress on sleeve number one. So I had wanted to do the sleeves two at a time on Magic Loop. Um, I've never done socks two at a time on Magic Loop, but I figured I would give it a shot. I tried two times to start both sleeves on Magic Loop and became incredibly frustrated because I I don't I, I feel like when I usually when I join in the round I usually slip the first stitch over onto the right needle and then slip the slip stitch over onto the left needle and then start knitting so you have like more security um, and overlapping stitches. For some reason I wasn't doing that when I wasn't making the connection that that might be something that I w would want to try when joining in the round. Um, so I would get these huge gaps when I was trying to do it on Magic Loop and I was becoming very frustrated as I alluded to earlier. So I just decided to do one at a time and um, it, this sleeve is working out very quickly. You can see that um, it starts out with a with ribbing and just like the body and then there are increases to a point and then you just have to knit 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 the rest of the way so once I got to the point um, I was working on magic loop with a set of um, size 7 40 inch circulars when I got to the point where I would I had the most the most stitches on the or the most stitches on the needle that I was going to have I decided to put them on 16 inch circulars and it fits perfectly so I have been zooming along on this sleeve um, and I've used most of the skein of one one skein of um, my alpaca merino blend um, this is yarn that Logan got me for the holidays. It is from Humble Hen Farm and Nursery in Abbottstown, Pennsylvania. Um, and I talked more about that in my previous episode and showed pictures of the alpaca who contributed their fleece to each of the three colors that I'm going to be using in the sweater. Uh, the sweater is the Umpqua by Caitlin Hunter. And I am trying to finish this for the Grocery Girls Speedy Sweater Cow. As of now, I have basically the body and the sleeve done so as long as I finish I feel like if I finish both sleeves by this by this upcoming weekend and put it together with the body then what I'll have to do the rest of what I'll have to do is the fun part which is the color work here is the color work that's the back of the sweater obviously um, it's the same thing on the front but yeah, so once you join the sleeves and you can see the join around here, um, the rest of it is just the, co the fun color work. Uh, so that, that's kind of like the fun thing about um, doing a bottom up sweater. Not that I've knit a top down sweater, but I've liked that you get the boring part out of the way first. And I kind of feel like um, I have my tush on fire to get the boring part done so I can get to the color work which is what I really want to do because I want to get all I want I want to have all these um, colors in it right now it's just like this like ivory color um, and I'm getting a little bored of it so yeah um, if I'm podcasting two weeks from now that means this will this should be done <laughs> so um, yeah just like send up a prayer and hope that I can finish this by then <laughs> 
I have a few things to share with you this week for prime time, which is where I talk about things that I've bought, things I've been gifted, um, things that I have found at local yarn shops, um, some yarn, some supplies, some books. So I have a few things to share with you today in that regard. Uh, the first is yarn. So I was on the hunt for size eight double pointed needles, but I wanted to get five inch needles. Well, it took me four stores to find five inch double pointed needles. And it took me three stores to realize that like the big box yarn craft supply stores just don't sell five inch double pointed needles except Joanne Fabric. Um, so I went to Joanne Fabric and they had five inch size eight double pointed needles, but they were all out. They were the only double pointed needles that were completely sold out. Michaels didn't have them. They have like size seven or size seven inch um, and Hobby Lobby didn't have them either. So finally I trekked over to my local yarn shop, which honestly should have been the first stop, but I had a coupon for Michaels, so I figured I'd get them 50% off. Um, well, that didn't work out, but while I was at Michaels, they were having a buy three, get one free yarn sale. So I picked up some Lily Sugar and Cream. I picked up three of these and one of these. Um, I would like to make a coffee bean cardigan with these. Um, I have no business ba making baby items. I don't think any of anyone I know that would think it would be like, I don't know. I don't think anyone who I know who is pregnant right now, I'm close enough with to knit them a baby garment, but I just love that cardigan. Um, Louise from Adventures with Yarn Podcast actually had one that she showed off and she also showed off an in threes cardigan and I was like those are so cute I just I really just want to make like a little baby cardigan just just to do it um, and maybe have it on hand for a gift so yeah I'm really liking this color I think it's unisex so um, very springy so you know I can always make it this year and then have it around um, in case someone is pregnant next year so I bought those um, and then also while I was out on that trip, I bought this little notions pouch from Hobby Lobby. Uh, it is, it is a, um, vintage pattern, a simplicity pattern, and, um, just like put on a, a little bag, which I really like, <laughs> and it just, it says, some are just born with it. thought that was cute. You have the one woman admiring the other woman. I thought it was a nice size. It was the right price. It's four bucks. Um, it's lined. It has an awesome zipper pull. So I I actually don't have a no Notions bag. Um, I was using a plastic bag to keep everything in. So th this is much nicer. <laughs> um, and then for the last thing for prime time was actually a gift from my dad. Um, my dad has been known to frequent thrift stores and like Goodwill and um, flea markets. And he came across this book called Knitting on the Edge. And it is a book that has all sorts of patterns for ribs, ruffles, um, pico, um, lace, things like that so there's a lot of really nice pictures and I could see using this as like you know if you have like a a shawl pattern and you want to add um some embellishments at the end like it's it's kind of like a stitch dictionary except a fringe dictionary lots of really neat things in here I actually saw one of the like look at this like instead of a traditional ribbing on a hat you could you could throw in like 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 something like this. Um, lots of really neat things, really nice pictures, good reference. Um, there's a section with flora and fauna, which I thought was pretty cool. So like, oh, <laughs> it's funny also. So it was like, you know, there's that. And then I saw this um, berry cluster too with beads that really remind me of Kristen Lehrer's pattern, the sparkling cider hat. 
and I thought, oh, I wonder if she had this book, or somehow this made it onto her radar. Um, it really does look like that little tree motif, and especially with the bead, I, I thought about that. I think it's probably different, but it looks similar. Um, so yeah, thank you, Dad. I really appreciate it. That's all I have for my knitting and crocheting content for this week. I'm a little light on the actual knitting because I have been trying to finish my Umqua sweater before the end of the month and also working on just like a project that you've seen a billion times before um, when I need a break from that. So I'm going to move on to my collaboration with Adventures with Yarn, Louise from the Adventures with Yarn podcast. Um, I'm going to link to her most recent episode. Um, she puts out an episode every week. I believe that when, by the time I release my episode, she will be, um, she will have released her episode 12. If not, I'll link to episode 11. And at the end of my video, I'll link to the episode where she did, where she answered my questions, which was her episode number 10. So a little bit about Louise. Um, Louise is from Oregon. Um, she had this really funny story when she showed um, some Lion brand woolies thick and quick about how a kid that she babysat called her Woolies instead of Louise because he was just mispronouncing her name, which I thought was hilarious. So, um, but I won't call you Woolies, Louise, unless you want me to. Um, but uh, Louise is a nurse. She lives with her husband and her Chihuahua Houdini, who makes uh, several guest appearances on the Adventures with Yarn podcast. Um, she does a lot of gift knitting. Um, she is into a variety of yarns, um, variety of crafts. Her mom is into quilting, so she shared some of her mom's quilting in a previous episode, which was really cool. Um, she podcasts every week and usually releases episodes on Mondays, so you can look forward to that. And she and I found each other's podcast um, either on YouTube or Instagram and started watching, and we really enjoyed each other's style and... Um, found similarities between what we like and kind of, I guess, you know, what we're doing. And, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm a big fan of her podcast. I encourage you to check her out, like her videos and subscribe to her channel. Um, and yeah, so we decided that we would each prepare 10 questions for each other to answer as part of a collaboration. Um, hopefully this will be the first of many collaborations um, for Louise, for me, uh, between the two of us. Um, so yeah, I'll just jump right into Louise's 10 questions for me. The first question is, when did you start learn to knit? So I actually don't remember when I like, officially learned how to knit. Um, my mom w would always be knitting like dishcloths or scarves. That was her primary hobby, I would say. So I think just one day I wanted to learn what she was doing and she taught me how to knit and purl. And I made my own scarf. Um, I don't even know like where it would be or what, what it looked like. I think it was like this like tweed... I think there's one there's one that we have that's like this tweed lion brand yarn, which I think is what I made. Um, but other than that, in terms of where I've learned to knit, I am a student of the school of YouTube. Um, so my mom and I actually took a crochet class at a yarn shop that no longer exists called Yarn Love. Um, and I loved crocheting. I pretty much took off and went wild with it. I crocheted all through high school, a little bit in college, although not as much. And then in law school, I was crocheting a ton. Um, but then in December of 2014, I received a Kindle from Logan for my, for the holidays. And I really wanted to crochet a case for it. Um, and I looked on Ravelry and everything I was finding that I really, really liked was knit. So I decided that I was going to give knitting a try and I knit a cabled, um, cozy for my, um, Kindle. I think I showed that off in like episode two or three. So you can check that out. Really easy pattern. Um, and I still continue to crochet, uh, but then my 
second after my second year of law school I worked at the firm that I currently work at uh, over the summer so this was the summer of 2015 and I joined the craft circle just for the summer I was the only one who was crocheting and um, honestly like I kind of felt a little left out um, they were all knitting and I still was crocheting a lot um, but I crocheted during my 3L year and then in, when I joined the firm in 2016 full time in the fall of 2016 I rejoined the craft circle but I was I was kind of going off and on like I wouldn't always go um, to the meetups we meet on Tuesdays and I don't know exactly what happened I think maybe I just found a pattern I really liked but I really liked the Guernsey wrap by Jared Flood so I bought that pattern and I went to my local yarn shop Little Owls and I bought yarn to make the Guernsey wrap and then I just kind of took off from there with the knitting I got really into it I think it's great that you can knit and crochet because I found that I prefer knitting for certain projects but I prefer crocheting for other projects Afghans, amigurumi, um, quick things I can crochet a lot faster than I can knit um, knitting, I would definitely do garments, accessories, um, I would never want to knit a blanket, although I guess never say never. Um, and then after I was knitting, I knit on the Guernsey wrap off and on all throughout 2017. And then in 2018, I saw an advertisement somewhere, it might have been an email, advertising a six-part YouTube series to do a sock knit along with the Red Heart spokesperson Marley Bird. So I decided I really wanted to do that and I learned how to knit socks and then since then, um, since about April of last year, I've just like really wanted to do nothing but knit. Um, I'm still crocheting an afghan, that's a current work in progress, but yeah, so that's my knitting origin story. Nothing too exciting, a little bit of mom showing me how to do it and mostly YouTube. Um, so question number two, what motivated you to start a podcast? Um, I, I, I have a re I have the reasons that most people who start a podcast have. Um, I came across this knitting community that records videos and posts them and shares their progress and talks with each other. And I had no, like, I had no idea that it even existed. Actually, a friend from work mentioned that she followed a bunch of knitting accounts on Instagram. And then she, I think told me that if I really was into knitting, which at that time I was getting very into knitting, so this was like April, May of last year, that I should check out Volenvine, or well actually at the time I should check out this podcast called Yarngasm. So I gave Yarngasm a try and I loved it. I just started watching all of Kristen's episodes and then from there I kind of stumbled upon the Grocery Girls, The Knitting Expat, Sticks Plus Twine, um, The Notorious Podcast, all these like really fun uh, podcasters and podcasting formats, you know, knitting, knitting with somebody else, knitting with a family member, um, knitting on your own. Um, I, I, I just, I really, really liked it. And so I think, you know, I was getting really interested in kind of starting my own and having also a way that I would be accountable to myself for projects that I started and wanted to finish. I'm lucky that um, my husband has a YouTube channel as well that he does a little bit of a different format but he does videos on um, computer related things, on server building, on computer parts, on audio. Um, keyboards, all that kind of stuff. So I had some um, hand-holding <laughs> um, getting going, but he really encouraged me once I voiced an interest in doing this. And like, I don't know, like for me, um, I think weekends are really hard sometimes because all I want to do is just sit and not do anything. So this really has given me a way to look forward to doing something on a Sunday and put something together and at the end I have something to show for it. Um, I, and I really, I, I, I've said this before, like I'm really just doing this for me and um, 
I have enjoyed, I guess, the side effects, um, the community and meeting friends. So I hope to continue doing it. And yeah. Question three, where are the places you've lived and what is it like where you live now? I've only really lived in two places. I am from central Pennsylvania. I currently live in Hershey. Um, I grew up in a town within the same township as I live in now. It's called Palmyra. And um, I then went to Philadelphia for seven years and lived in West Philadelphia for college and law school. Where I live right now, it is pretty quiet. It's very family oriented. Um, it is a tourist destination because of Hershey Park. Um, and I enjoy living here. I enjoy being near my parents. I don't necessarily like the weather. It feels like we only get either freezing cold or just hot, like hot and humid in the summer, which I, I don't really like. You need a car to get around everywhere. Um, there's lots of trails, a lot of outdoor things to do. There's a lot of um, hiking, biking trails, especially near where I live. Um, what else? Oh, there's a lot of farmland. We live just 30 minutes outside of Lancaster. And one of the things that's like a selling point for this area is that it's close to a lot of major metropolitan cities. So it's an hour and a half from Philadelphia. It's about three hours from New York. Um, and over the years, actually, there's become, there's been a push for more things to do. Um, more restaurants, I guess mostly more restaurants and dining and places that, like, young adults can go and grab drinks and things like that. Um, question number four, do you knit continental style or throw over style? I knit English style. Um, I throw my yarn. I tension my yarn very weirdly. Um, I pretty much like when I'm when I work with my right hand I like tug the yarn to tension it which makes my stitches very tight but also makes them very uniform. Um, when I knit color work I use two hands so I use the main I hold the main color in my right hand and then the um, the uh, contrast color in my left hand so I do kind of know how to knit continental um, and I would like to learn how to knit faster so I think I think over time um, I would like to transition to flicking rather than throwing so that I don't have to take my hand off the needle every single time that I make a stitch. Question number five, what are all the types of crafts you've dipped your toes into? What do you still want to try? Uh, not to be boring, but I haven't dipped my toes in too many crafts other than knitting and crocheting. I was very into art at one time, um, so I would do like oil painting and um, drawing. I actually took a figure drawing class in college, um, and that's really where I've dabbled in terms of art. Um, one craft that I really want to try is sewing. I did a little bit of sewing when I was younger. This is very embarrassing, but I actually made a pillow with a picture of, I sewed together a pillow and I um, like steamed a picture of like steam, iron, like ironed on, like you know those things you can buy at like Michael's where you like print something on this paper that transfers to fabric? Well, that exists if you didn't know, but um, yeah, I decided to pick to like take a picture of John Travolta from Urban Cowboy and <laughs> print it on this pillow that I had sold. So I had this John Travolta pillow, which is like kind of weird, but actually it was really cool. <laughs> and I sewed that pillow together. Um, I did some sewing at my summer camp. I have a sewing machine. I think probably I'll eventually bite the bullet and take sewing classes, but I would love to make bags, uh, garments, and things like that. Okay, question number six. Can you talk about your yarn board? What is a yarn board and what is it for? How does the yarn stay up there? Okay, so Louise is talking about this yarn board. Um, I've talked a little bit about it in previous podcasts. This was a pure Pinterest success. <laughs> I found a picture of yarn boards um, when I searched like yarn storage on Pinterest and this is what they came up with um, and I Like look read an article about how you might be able to make this 
and they talked about using an old pegboard and repurposing a pegboard and sticking hooks in the pegboard um, and holding your yarn wound up wound up on the yarn board with pegs. So my husband, who was my boyfriend at the time, um, had a pegboard hanging in his room um, that, or like his childhood room, that um, I had seen and he wasn't using it anymore. So I asked his mom, who's incredibly crafty and creative, if she thought that we might be able to make a yarn board out of his pegboard. And she said she thought she could do it. So she went and bought um, this like fabric, like really thin fabric that's over it and put fabric over the pegboard. I'm not exactly sure how she did it, but um, she made it and it no longer has holes in it except when you want to stick yarn in it, you have to take an X-Acto knife and like punch the holes in it where the pegs are, but that's covered by fabric. So as an example, I took off a skein of yarn to show how the um, the balls hang up there. So once it's wound, the way I wind yarn is that I I wind the yarn around around the ball winder, and then as I take it off, I take the ball band and shove it in, like so that the ball band is in the center. And then what I do is to stick it on the wall. I just take a hook. And you can buy these online. Um, they're like three inch hooks and I and they have these um, prongs. So these are aligned with the holes in the pegboard and I think it's like a standard um, sizing but I just take it and stick it in the ball band thing and then that's how it hangs. So you can't really see the hook and it's lodged into the board. And some of them actually, like not all of them are up there on pegs. Some of them, like I've shoved balls in between, um, but most of them are on pegs. And um, what is it used for? It's basically used for storage. Um, I usually wind up skeins when I anticipate using them within the next few weeks or a few months. Obviously that hasn't happened with all of these, but some of them are actually projects that I started and then I frogged, so I still have the, the skeins wound up. Um, and I also put like my, my leftover minis up there. I hope that answers all of your questions, Louise, about the yarn board. If there's anything I didn't cover, let me know. But um, yeah, it's, it's really awesome. Also, <laughs> I guess more than anything, it's like a piece of art to me. I really like um, displaying my yarn like that and I think the pattern on the board is really cool so um, it's it's wall art and uh, I think it's just an added bonus that I can store some of my um, my yarn on there as well question seven what would be your ideal beverage to sip on while knitting oh that is a hard question definitely depends on the time of day and it also depends on the setting for example, last night I was at a bar and I was with my husband. We just went out to grab a drink. It actually was like we're, they called for a huge snowstorm here over the weekend and it didn't really snow that much. It just kind of was icy and gross. Um, but we went out because we didn't think a lot of people would be out and we got a drink. So I brought my knitting to the bar and I literally sat in it at the bar, which was pretty cool. But um, I had beer. So I had a Michelob Ultra and a Trogues Mad Elf. So I do love beer, I love wine, I like tea. I wouldn't say I love tea, I like tea and I love coffee. So I'll just go through and share my favorites of those um, if you're interested. So in terms of coffee, I love the Edamons K-Cups. Uh, my favorite flavor is the cinnamon crumb cake. Some of that with some heavy cream, delicious. Um, if I am getting something iced, I usually go for an iced quad espresso with two pumps of sugar-free vanilla and heavy cream. Um, tea. I like celestial seasonings. I like the Bengal spice. And I also have recently gotten very into the black cherry berry herbal tea. So those are the favorite teas. Um, beers. I like all kinds of beers. I like sours. I like wheats, stouts. 
I think probably two of my favorites are Founders Breakfast Stout and the Weyerbacher's Sexy Mother Pucker. For wine, I like Semi Dry Reds. I like the Little Penguin Shiraz, which was the house wine when I lived with my roommate. Um, it is very reasonable for a double bottle. And I also like the Decoys and Findel. It is so good. Um, and then for if I'm drinking liquor, I like Moscow Mules. So uh, Logan makes a mean Moscow Mule. Um, I've mentioned before I'm diabetic. So first of all, I shouldn't really be drinking a lot. Um, and when I do, it's usually like one or two. I don't, I don't go all out with drinking. Um, but he makes these Moscow Mules with these Polar Ice Diet Orange Drinks, Diet Ginger Beer, Lime Juice, and Tito's Vodka, and they're delicious. You can ask our friends. Um, okay, question number eight. What exactly happened when Harry met Ani? <laughs> so my podcast title is a pun on the movie When Harry Met Sally. Um, and I just decided to be cute because I love a good pun, um, and called it When Harry Met Ani because we got Harry first and, um, Onyx came second. So I will just, um, insert a video of what happened about five days when Harry met Ani. <laughs> so that just gives you a little glimpse into our lives they don't get along all the time they tolerate each other um they have very different personalities but we love them to pieces question number nine what is it like to be an attorney and what is the best part well i really like um that i'm always learning something new at work it's the law is constantly evolving. I particularly like the area of law I practice. Um, I'm doing trademark and copyright law, which deals with all aspects of things people create, branding, um, advertising, marketing. So really interesting issues. And I'm very, very fortunate to work with people that I really like. So I think those are the best parts of um, being an attorney. Um, I also like reading and writing. That's something I've always been drawn to. Um, and I like helping clients. I do a little bit of litigation, which is where um, one party sues another party, so I'm representing one of the parties. But in general, it's it's a pretty... Um, it's a field where I'm, I'm really helping people either protect their work and what they've thought of and what they've worked so hard to create or protect their brands and their businesses in the best way and also the landmines to avoid when they're trying to use other people's works. So it's been a really great experience. I'm a relatively new attorney. I'm, I've only been working at a law firm for a little over two years. And I work at a, I work at a pretty big law firm. So I would say the best things about being an attorney are, for me, um, always learning something new. I like the particular practice I have and I love the people that I work with. Last question, question number 10. What is on your knitting bucket list? So many things. I wanna make so many things. <laughs> so I just picked out a few and I will pop pictures of each of them in. Um, so I really would like to make the underwing mitts. Um, I would like to make the Ramblin' Woman coat slash sweater by Caitlin Hunter. I would like to make the Sinister Cadigan. <laughs> Um, and then in terms of a crochet bucket list project, I would like to make the Naya mosaic blanket. And then f as far as like other bucket list items that aren't project oriented, I would like to learn how to knit faster so that I can like knit more things. Um, like I said, probably it would, it would entail learning flicking instead of throwing. Um, I would like to design a, a crochet or a knit project. Um, particularly one with charts. I think charts are really interesting and I think it'd be really cool to come out with some kind of sweater pattern that has a chart on it and then I could kind of draw on um, 
my drawing and painting that I used to really love how to do and making a chart. And then the last thing on my bucket list would be I have always really wanted to sell handmade items at a crafts at a craft show. So whether it would be selling like baby hats or um, actually hats, like I see a lot of hats, headbands, um, ear warmers. I think that that would be really fun, a good use of yarn that I have, um, especially some of the acrylic stuff because people love being able to buy something they can just toss in the wash um, and dry it and just go about their day. Those are the things that I have on my bucket list and that is also the last question I have on my list. So uh, thank you so much, Louise, for putting those questions together for me. I had a really fun time thinking about my answers and thinking about, um, yeah, just thinking about my journey so far and my journey through knitting and podcasting and meeting everybody. And um, I can only look forward to more. So uh, be sure to check out Louise's podcast, Adventures with Yarn, and check out the episode where she answered the questions I had for her. It's her episode number 10. So until next time, I hope you all have a great end of January and keep knitting and crocheting, whatever you're working on, and I will see you next time. Bye!